Welcome to this afternoon's session, which is entitled Using Plan to Plan. Okay, so this afternoon we're going to be thinking about how to use plan to plan. So before we start, I'd just like to get a feel from you about how familiar you are with the plan resources and go onto the Mentimeter, put in that code and just choose one of those options. Okay, so we've got a good splattering across all of those um, different um, choices there. Um, so hopefully by the end of the session, people will be thinking if they've not really used them, that they are worth having another look at and going back to. And perhaps those people who use them a lot, perhaps when we get to the chat at the end, it would be useful for you to share um, your thoughts on how you've used them and how your staff have used them also. Okay, so this is just straight from the new um, Ofsted framework. And it states clearly that the school's curriculum needs to be planned and sequenced towards these clearly defined endpoints. And this is where I think the plan resources are really beneficial to teachers. So there's two resources that are particularly useful. The first one is to support teachers with understanding what the working scientifically skills should actually look like because all the statements, unfortunately, in the national curriculum are a little bit open to interpretation. So what the plan team has tried to do is use their experience and talking to teachers to really try and grapple with what those statements mean. And that's where these bullet points have come from. So the green statements are the statements from the national curriculum. And then the bullet points of what the plan team has added bearing in mind notes and guidance in the national curriculum and also experience with working with teachers. So these, these examples, these matrices can be downloaded free from the website. Basically, when you're on the website, there's two ways of accessing it. One way is as a teacher, to find these matrices, you would go in as a teacher and then you would just download the, the working scientifically matrix from the page there. We've also put the same information into a different format for subject leaders. So you can see here in grey, we've got an overarching theme. Um, so asking questions and recognising that can be answered in different ways. And then we've grouped the objectives underneath that from the different year groups. So as a subject leader, you'll be able to look across the page and see the progression. So that document would be um, found in a slightly different way on the website. So you would go into the subject leader area and then download it from there. So the next aspect of the what we'd like to think about is the knowledge. The knowledge, I believe, actually does have good progression built into it. The problem is that, again, the statements are open to interpretation. And if we're not careful, it's very easy to get led astray by exciting activities that we find on the internet. And suddenly we realize that we've not teaching the um, appropriate objectives for year two, and we're doing something that actually should be in year five. So it's really important that teachers have a really clear understanding of those objectives, particularly when you look at something like animals, including humans, and you can see that that topic is in every single year group. That doesn't mean the progression isn't there. It just means we've got to be more careful with really thinking about those objectives. It is also worth thinking about renaming those topics so children don't every year go, oh, I'm doing animals including humans yet again. Um, so just renaming the, to the topic to, to link with the objectives is worth thinking about. So what I'd like you to have a think about is I have got here six statements, the six statements from those animals, including humans topics. I've put them in a random order. What I would like you to do on the chat, or if you don't want to put it onto the chat, just onto a piece of paper, but I would like you, if possible, to commit it to a piece of paper so you remember what you thought. I'd like you to decide which of those objectives of the year one, is it A, B, C, D, E or F, which is year two, which is year three, four, five and six. So perhaps on the chat you just write one, B, two, F. I'll leave you with a moment to do that.
Okay, thank you. Hopefully you've had a little bit of a chance to um, reflect on that, even if you didn't um, put your answers onto the chat, that's fine. Um, if, you, if you're a class teacher, you may be very familiar with the objectives that you're going to be teaching, but not necessarily familiar with um, everybody else's objectives. So that might be more challenging for class teachers, whereas subject leaders may have a better feel for that whole progression through the curriculum. Um, so these are the year groups for each of those statements. So I'll just let you just reflect and pause on whether you got them in the right sequence there. What I just want to draw your attention to, because this is where the problem starts, that often there are objectives that can appear to be similar. So we've got this objective in year two, notice that animals, including humans, have offspring, which grow into adults. And this other one in year five, describe the changes as humans develop to old age. If we're not careful, we can end up with the work and the learning in year two being rather similar to that in year five. And it's a combination of the year two teacher being aspirational and wanting to push the children, but by doing that may encroach into the year fives or the year fives not sure, particularly with this, about what is supposed to be covered and what isn't supposed to be covered. So the knowledge matrices give guidance on this. And you can see here that there's a statement in year two, which is very much about the babies and the adults. Whereas in year five, it's much more about the, um, the changes as they grow older. So it's much more detail. It's not just the beginning and the end, it's the processes that they go through during those changes. So those matrices can be found on the website through the teacher's aspect um, and the knowledge matrices. When you click on the view more, you get a table so that you can pick the specific one that you require for the topic that you're teaching. So I've just basically cut and paste little bits from the year two one and the year five one. If you clicked on either of those, it would open the whole matrix. Um, so back here again, let's just look at another couple of um, objectives where there is likely or possible overlap. So again, in year two, We've got this aspect of what humans need for survival and animals, and part of that is the food that they need, and it talks about eating the right amounts of different types of food. And then in year three, we have this statement, which again is talking about the food that humans need, the right types and amount of nutrition. So it's very easy for year two and year three, again, to look very similar. And this is where the matrices can help us. So again, I've just taken on the left hand side, there is the year two um, matrix and you can see there that it's talking about the right amounts of types of food. What does the types of food mean? And this is where the vocabulary on the matrix is very useful, important. It's meat, fish, vegetables, bread, rice, pasta. So it's those food groups. When we move on to year three, it's nutrients that are important. And again, the vocabulary is in there. So basically, if teachers look at the key learning and also focus on that vocabulary, then it should help them to pitch the, the lessons appropriately. So we've talked about those clearly defined endpoints, but we also, as teachers, need to be really clear on where, this, where the children are coming from. What is it we're building on? What's been taught before? And again, the knowledge matrices can help with this. This is just one from the year four. You can see at the bottom there, those are the year four objectives that the children would be learning about. But you've also, above that, got the prior learning from previous years and the future learning. So you know when you start your activities, what should the children know? What do I need to remind them about? Perhaps look back to or speak to the previous teachers about the types of activities that we might have done so that you can remind the children of those things. And then you've also got the future learning so you know what you're not covering. So you don't accidentally tread on that year five teacher's toes and then spoil the progression through the school. What's also coming through really strongly um, from Ofsted inspections is that it's not only important that the teacher knows about this progression, but the children are starting to be much more aware of it as well. So this is one example of how um, a school has chosen to do this. 
by actually putting it up as part of their display. So this was a year six class about the circulatory system, so animals including humans in year six. Um, but they've put on there, what is it they've done in the past about different digestive systems? And then also what is it that we'll be learning during this topic? So that's just one way that a school has chosen to share the prior learning with their pupils. You may well have other ways that you can pop onto the chat and share with us either now or at the end of the session. So we need to know where the children are coming from. We need to have a clear understanding of that defined end point. But we also need to be really careful that as we're moving through, we're not either going through too quickly um, at a much too superficial level, because what we don't want to do is build up or reinforce any misconceptions or alternative conceptions that they already have got. If we're going to be able to deal with misconceptions, it's really helpful if we know what likely misconceptions children might have. If you've taught the year group before, you may well have picked up on those. There are lots of resources and books out there, but the plan resources, again, on the knowledge matrices, it gives you this information. So underneath the other parts that I've shared with you, there is this area where there are the common misconceptions. So it's worth reading through these things just so that you're aware these are the things that you need to be listening out for. And if you find that children do agree with some of these statements, you'd need to think about how are you going to show them that they need to adjust their thinking. So rather than just telling them that they're incorrect, we'd need to think about how can we support them with coming to that conclusion for themselves that they need to change their ideas. So that's what the resources do. Um, initially, I'm gonna stop there with those. What I'd like you to think about is when you're planning a lesson, what is it that you need to think about before you start teaching? And ask you to pop in three things possibly, I may have set it at five, three things that you need to think about before you start teaching. These are things that you might record in your lesson plans or on slides, or it may just be in your head. Okay, if you're still putting your answers in, please feel free to click, keep clicking. So there's a whole array of things there, and obviously people have put slightly different words in, but vocabulary, resources, knowledge, skills, uh, differentiation, whole raft of things there. And I like the full safeties, I can see that popping in there. Um, and then also things like fun and enjoyment and knowing the children. And these are all important aspects as well that we do need to consider. There's a nice range of things that people are thinking about there. So a lot of these things are things that you have um, mentioned on that um, Mentimeter there. So I think these first ones we've already talked about um, and how the plan resources can support them. The next couple of things that um, I'd like to share with you are on the resources are support with evidence in the learning and then support for including a range of types of inquiry. And then these last three, which are things that um, cropped up on, the, um, on your information, are things that I don't think the plan resource can do. They are things that are much more dependent on your class, they're dependent on your school setting, and also on your teaching style and the way that you like to deliver things, and also responding to what's in front of you. So the plan resources I'm not going to claim can do everything, but I think they can also support with helping you think about ways of gathering evidence and the types of inquiry. So on the resources again, alongside the key learning, there's the possible evidence. So these are suggested ideas, they're not the only way, it's just a few ideas of how the children may show that they have acquired the knowledge. And then further down underneath the misconceptions, you've got some suggestions of activities many of which are inquiry activities that the children might carry out, but of course it's not an exhaustive list. And again, the possible evidence that might show that they are able to apply the knowledge within those activities. 
I've shared this document before, but just to highlight it again. So this is on, uh, on our website for each area of the national curriculum. There are suggestions of the different types of inquiry that you might include within a topic. Again, it's not an exhaustive list. It's just to give teachers a starting point. And where something is not relevant, that is also highlighted as well. We don't want to be shoehorning types of inquiry where they don't really belong. And the link is there. And if you find it, if you're on the website, you can go into our resources and you will find the documents there. Um, the web link will be, is being posted on the chat. And also, if you want these slides, you'll have an email address to email later to get them. So in summary, the plan matrices provide a lot of useful guidance for teachers. The prior and the future learning, which is so key with the new um, national frame, Ofsted framework, gives clarity on the national curriculum statements, both for working scientifically and knowledge. It gives the key vocabulary so teachers are able to pitch the learning appropriately. The vocabulary that's included on the plan matrices are very much the vocabulary that children would be expected to use. There may be other vocabulary that the teacher may be introducing, but it wouldn't be important to assess the children using this. I'm thinking, for example, where children in Key Stage 1 are learning about what different animals eat. They need to know that a lion eats other animals, whereas a teacher may start to use the word carnivore, but if a child doesn't use the word carnivore, they would still be secure with their knowledge. Common misconceptions are there to support also the inquiry ideas and possible ways that the learning can be evidenced. So just to finish off very quickly, if you would like the slides, um, you can email us on admin at primary-science.co.uk. We've now been putting all the videos from the previous sessions onto our YouTube channel. So you can, if you just search for primary science education consultancy, maybe we can put that link on the chat as well. Next week, we're going to think further about how plan can be used to support assessment. It will be the same Zoom link and at the same time on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 4 p.m. So what, um, so in a moment we're going to go over to the chat and I'd like you to, if you've been using the plan resources, it would be really useful for you to share how you found using them, but also if you've shared them, if you're the subject leader and you've shared them with your staff, how did you introduce them? How did they get on with them? What do you find useful? Is there anything that you think would be useful to share? So thank you very much. I'm going to switch my video and my microphone off now. So have a lovely week and hopefully see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>